Hey guys, I appreciate your questions. I got a response from Kay Fleming and the questions was, it was two of them I wanted to answer today. One was as a tenure paramedic, is a new grad internship required? And also, is there any benefit to pursuing direct positions that don't require full internships? I'm going to answer those questions uh, in pretty good detail. So welcome to my podcast. So the situation is uh, if you've been a paramedic for 14 to even 20 years and you're really tenured, it's a new grad internship required. I would say yes. And I'm going to tell you why. One of the things you have to remember is that nursing is not the same as being a paramedic. It's two totally different things. It's apple and oranges. Now, some areas do kind of overlap like a Venn diagram, but most of nursing doesn't is being a paramedic is definitely not the same as being a nurse. And so another thing you have to look at, what is an internship in nursing? In nursing, we call that a new grad residency. One of the things you got to kind of, kind of look at what is your residency? Your residency is nothing more than just an extended orientation. So anytime a nurse gets a job and you go to that job, typically you have a, depending on what it is, you typically have an orientation period and think of your orientation period, like clearing, like, you know, you're clearing your service. It's the same thing because, but it's just that as a new grad, it's longer and you're with the preceptor and and you there pretty long. Like, for example, most places I've been, orientation is typically about six weeks. But as a new grad, your orientation is going to be a year. And why is that? It's because there's certain things you need to know. For example, you need to learn how to chart. You need to learn how to do an assessment. You need to learn how to dispense medications from the pixels. You need to learn how to do floor reports or report or report to other floors. And you got to know, understand code statuses. You got to understand what a cold stroke means and cold STEMI means in your role or cold blue or cold medic or cold elopes or even baby gets missing, cold, cold pink. And if you don't understand those, that can put you in a, a, a lack of knowledge and that can kind of hurt you in your practice. So to kind of get back into what I mean, the difference is a nurse, yeah, I mean, a, a paramedic, you you can function in a place like the ED, but your skills won't, you won't be to practice in oncology. You have to have an orientation because the medications are different. How, how, you, how you go about your routine day, how you do your assessment, which, how do you gear up for medications? Uh, how do you give chemo? How do you give radiation? Your medical skills is not going to help you in these situations. So what's the purpose of uh, the the new grad residency? One is, is to kind of get you on board, is to give you a, a good chance to get acclimated before us. If you're a new grad and you try to hit a floor like an ICU floor and you don't have an extended orientation, it's real hard to within that six weeks or even 13 weeks to try to get all your device training, learn about the impeller, learn about the swan, learn about CRRT and learn about how to take care of ECMO patients. Uh, you titrate in several drips. So you're charting, you have Q, Q1 tasks, Q2 tasks, Q4 tasks, you have daily tasks, uh, you have once a day tasks. Like like zero on your swan. I mean, there's a lot, and you have to ambulate your patients three times a day. So there's a lot that goes into that. And if you're not really prepared, number one, you're going to get burned out real quick because you're going to be running around all day, and and by you not knowing what to do, you can put the patient in harm. So that's one of the reasons why, as a new grad, you need orientation. A long, long, long time ago, from what I'm hearing from a lot of seasoned nurses, is when you first came into nursing, that was only one place you could go, which was you had to hit the floor. And when you hit the floor, they mean a med surge unit to where you're giving med passes, you're doing a lot of cleaning, 
Um, you're doing a lot of the traditional floor nursing. But these days, because especially on the shortage, I mean, you literally can come right out of schooling and and land right into a, a CTICU. Uh, whereas before, you had to have a certain amount of years on the floor before you could go to a specialty area or area like ED or radiology, oncology. Those places, you had to have uh, years of nursing experience. But now as a new grad, you're coming out. So they just want to make sure that you you're that you're up to par. So for the answer for your first question, as a tenured paramedic, is a is a new grad internship choir required? Yes. Most places it is going to be required. Now, to answer the second question, is there any benefit to pursuing direct positions that don't require full internships, like a direct hire position? In some areas, I would say yes. There's two places that I feel that as a that as a paramedic, you can come out and you can work and you can just do your normal nursing uh, six week orientation period and be directly ready to go. One place is the ED, I feel like you can. And the other place is critical care transport if you have experience. Now for the ED, and I think sometimes this is where where medics kind of get, sometimes you can be a victim of your own bubble. Usually, you know, I hear things coming from paramedics like, oh, I can be a nurse. Nursing is easy. Oh, I can be a nurse. Yeah, that's only because you're looking at the ED. You hear nurses say, I mean, you hear paramedics say things like, oh, all you do is sit around and take orders all day. Well, obviously, that's everyone takes orders. Doctors has to write orders from everything from an IV to CT scan. Everybody operates on orders, even nutritionists. So uh, but what I'm trying to get at is you only see nursing through your lens as being a medic. You have to. That's because you're not a nurse yet. Once you're a nurse, you start to understand that there are certain places where your medic skills can transfer, and the ED is one of them. Uh, for example, and I kind of give, give you my story. So when I first came out of nursing school, I tried to get a, I tried to get a, a new grad residency at a level one trauma center, and I could I couldn't get it. I tried a level three, uh, I couldn't get an internship, and and it baffled me. I'm like, wow, you know, I'm a not only a, Am I a medic? I mean, I'm a freaking special operations medical instructor. I know trauma like that back of my hand. Like I know what to do. I'm military. I'm military trained, um, civilian trained. I know what I'm doing, but yet I didn't get hired. So I wound up settling for a, a general medicine step down unit. And I was so bored, but I learned so much. First of all, I learned how to do nursing assessments. I learned how to pass out medications and just the basic nursing functions I learned. After about six months of that new grad residency, I kind of got tired of it. And I took a direct hire position um, at the ED trauma center. Matter of fact, it was one of the trauma centers that initially turned me down. Uh, I wound up uh, going back there. And the, the benefit would be number one to pay because as a new grad, you know, you sacrifice and lower pay for experience. But when I got this direct internship, I'm sorry, a direct position in the ED, I did the five week, I did my five weeks internship. I didn't need any other, I'm sorry, my five week orientation. After that, I was ready to hit, I hit the floor running. My pay rate was seven more dollars an hour than what I was receiving um, as a new grad. So I got seven more dollars an hour. And not only that, uh, like I said, after five weeks orientation, I was good. Now, there were some things I, ha- I kind of had to learn, like, you know, like the cold strokes and what to do, how to, you know, um, when I followed them to the CT scan and what I do after that and things like little, little stuff like Hank, you know, uh, two nurses validation for things like hanging blood or heparin and all that stuff. That was one, that was one of the benefits. So the ED is one of the places you can go. And honestly, you will feel comfortable in the ED. And if you are a, a medic now working in the ED, I'm pretty sure you probably feel comfortable. Uh, you can transition into a nurse uh, role without any problems. Another one is critical care transport. 
And this is one of the areas I think that if you're a CCT medic, you can transition to be a CCT nurse because you're basically doing the same job. It's only a couple of th- couple of medication differences, but it's the same thing. And I just wish that camps accreditation, camps accreditation would would catch up to what the differences is and 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 stop putting that barrier there for paramedics to transition over to to being a CCT nurse because it's basically the same job. And I've known I've known some places that kind of gave an, a brief orientation period. But when I first came out of nursing school, it was real hard if you was a CCT paramedic to transition to a CCT nurse. They literally wanted you to go to the ICU for a extended a period of time, like sometimes even up to three years before you can even come back to get on the truck or fly, which is ridiculous. But the but those are the two places that as a medic that you can literally uh, transition right into nursing without having to go through a new grad internship. It's the ED and critical care transport. So hopefully if I've answered both those questions for you. If you still have any more questions, uh, feel free to reach out. And for anyone, if you guys have any specific questions about uh, some things that you're not getting from the podcast, you can always feel free to to send me an email and it's paramedic two rn info at gmail.com. That's paramedic the number two info at gmail.com. Guys, thank you for joining me and uh you guys have a nice day.